Trump week, enough to make you depressed, okay? Um, so <laughs> that's Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, and me, Jay Fidel, here on Think Tech, talking as we do at 11 every Friday on Trump week. So this is a week uh, under the shadow of what happened in El Paso and in Dayton, and the reaction of our uncouth president um, to those events. And it is also defined by the continuing trade war with China, among other things, where it appears uh, that we are getting closer to, to, to blows with China, and China's gonna turn off all uh, its uh, agricultural imports from the United States. Um, and it, it, things seem to be unraveling. And I guess the question I would ask ultimately in this show is, uh, are they unraveling to the point where that will affect Trump's popularity and likelihood of re-election. But first, Tim, let's talk about all the titles that we came up with in trying to, in trying to take a look at what happened this week. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, let's talk about all the titles because there were so many that we had to you know, discount because we had to find the right one. And I think we did find the right one, and that is centered around Donald Trump's hate. And um, he could try to deny his hate as much as he wishes, but he is on record um, when he first became a candidate in 2015, all the way to um, at the rally where someone yelled out in the crowd, shoot him. And he smirked and he smiled and he said, only in the panhandle can you say things like that. Well, apparently not. Apparently in all of Texas, um, this kind of attitude um, seems to reign. And it's, it's, it's tragic, and that's why the titles we came up with were Can Impeachment Wait? That was a possible title. Um, is hate just the beginning? How many more El Pasos in our future? Doubling down on hate, and our century is burning. Yeah, and our country. Ooh. So uh, let's talk about uh, Trump's reaction to what happened in El Paso and, and Dayton. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there were lots of lies, first off. He um, tries to pin it all on mental illness, not putting any kind of responsibility on guns, um, wouldn't want to make that NRA mad, um, but of course doesn't take any responsibility for his own hate speech. He has just recently taken out 2,000 ads on Facebook. Um, for re-election ads, right? And all of them directly call it an invasion on our southern border. Now, the guy who went and shot those people in El Paso verbatim quotes Trump's hate speech. So they can make a direct link from this kid to what Trump is saying. Every Democrat that's running for president right now has come out and said that this is a direct result of Trump's hate speech. And they're all calling him a white supremacist. Mm. Well, Elizabeth, is Elizabeth Warren is. Not just Elizabeth Warren, Beto O'Rourke. Biden did also. Joe Biden did in his big speech, too. So, um, and then, uh, I always forget the guy's first name. The Oriental Yang. Uh, John, is it? I, no, it's not John. I can't remember his first name, but... Yang, at any rate, is um, also, same thing I heard him last night say, that he believes that there is a link, and it's pretty unavoidable. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. That's what he said. And it's really true, you know. Yeah. So when you, and he's doubling down on it. He's doubling that's, that's down on all that of it. That's, that's <laughs> what he always does. Triple, quadruple. So. Oh, yeah. So uh, I guess the question I, I put to you, Tim, is uh, are we going to have more of this? Um, uh, is Congress going to do anything to stop it or slow it down? I'm, I'm not talking about guns yet. We'll get to that. Yeah, I'm talking that. about white supremacy. Uh, we're talking about hatred of, of uh, Latinos. The Trump administration already tried to push back um, Department of Homeland Security's designation that white supremacist groups are as dangerous as any kind of international terrorism group. And they so tried to define it, and the White House is pushing back on that. Why? Well, didn't Mitch McConnell say that he was, he was going to take action of some kind, but not now, later, after the recess? Well, we've heard this about Parkland. How many shootings are they so engaged and revved up now to, to make a difference and prevent these kind of tragedies 
and these you know these hateful assassinations and and, and murders and to not for no nothing ever has followed through because he knows the attention span of the American public is quite short. Yeah. So by right. the time they come back, there's something else gross will I think, happen. I, I, I think finally they did outlaw the bum socks, um, uh, things that would allow a single shot into a multiple shot rifle. They, they did actually do something and they banned that. But it took a, it was an uphill Herculean uh, effort to do so. And it was Walmart, part of, right? Walmart is taking action. They stopped selling. But they yeah. didn't stop selling guns. They just stopped advertising very violent video games. Oh yeah, that was the other thing that Trump blamed it on. Yeah. You know, violent video games. Yeah. Well, and there's no, there's no merit to that argument. Right, either. and there's I, no study that links them to that at all. I mean, it really is telling on some of his quotations. And yes, he's, you know, he deflected off his responsibility in his words through the last three years of demonizing, you know, immigrants, um, legal as asylum applicants, uh, demonizing them. And basically, you're right, he took a left turn and said it's video games and mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, 2018, June 2018, Democrats are the problem. Illegal immigrants, no um, matter how bad they may be to pour into and infest our country, uh, like MS-13, they can't win on their terrible policies, so they view them as potential voters. And that's how he's tried to frame the argument that the Democrats want illegal immigration because they're going to be potential voters. It's an outrageous statement. It is ridiculous. I agree. So, well, so we have outrageous statements, and you want to talk about the photo. Let's put, bring the photo up for a couple. So this photo has been going around it's on social media. It started out with, uh, apparently, with uh, Ivanka's social media. And what you have is... Uh, Melania's. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. And, and the child, okay, is an orphan of El Paso. Both her parents were shot dead. Uh, and that was a story all in itself. But here's Trump smiling. She's smiling. And he's doing, you know, the thumbs up. This is the baby that was orphaned because the dad was shot first, trying to block the shot at the mom. And then the mom was shot. And the baby broke its hand when it fell, when the mom fell with it. Um, that he would do that. This is the same day Okay, the same day when he went to El Paso, that they did raids, ICE did raids, and there were 600 ICE agents that went out there and made more than 600 arrests. And this is on the first day of school. <clears throat> so all these kids that are at school have nowhere to go, no one to pick them up, with no, any, no warning at all to the school system, no warning to CPS, no warning for anyone. They just did it. And they went to the... Um, the food processing plants. And of course, there's, there's no problems for the employers, but all of the, the people were. I think that's an operative point right up. there. That's a really operative point. Mm -hmm. It's been said by a few, but it needs to be amplified. And that is, okay, you want to round up all these illegal, illegal immigrants, um, whether asylum seekers or not, not one inclination of, or, or penalty for the employer that brings them onto the payroll. Now, that was supposed to be, you know, e-verified and all these uh, checks and balances to prevent the hiring of those who, you know, have not been documented. What happened to that? And how does the government just look the other way when it comes to those employers? Well, it struck me when I heard that. It was like a day after or two days after the, the El Paso shooting. Right. Um, that's really terrible timing. It is. Now, you can say, and then the U.S. attorney for... I don't know, was it Louisiana? I forget what Mississippi. It, Mississippi. He said, oh, we planned this a long time ago. Yeah, but, you know, you could have held up. This is time of mourning, of national outrage. You know, you can do more against the Mexicans. And gee whiz, these are not uh, criminals. They're not drug dealers. They're not terrorists. They're working in a food processing plant. For many they're years. Trying, yeah, they're them. trying to be productive. Why go after them? And why go after them now? Um, it, it's it's hard hearted. It's hard the word, hardly the word. Driving in this morning on uh, National Public Radio, there was an interview of an 11 year old girl whose parents were taken away, both of them. She is alone, and she was in a state. I tell you, I saw that one girl cry, and um, that was pretty tough to yeah. watch. Yeah, it was pretty tough to watch. 
Um, we have a quotation from someone from Homeland Security, excuse me, um, from ICE, and we're a law enforcement agency, not a social agency. Yeah. And well, again, it's this obtuse conversation that's taking place, a one-way conversation to the American public and Trump's base is that this is okay. This is okay. This is kind of what you want us to do. And for that percentage, is it 35? I don't know what percent it is anymore. They're like, yeah, we're okay with that. Remember um, you mentioned about the children being separated and put in cages in your interview in, I believe it was in um, Alabama. Right. And they said, well, that's what the children deserve. And that's what the parents deserve. Yeah. They shouldn't have come here to begin with. And so we have this, this overwhelming um, attitude of just hardness and reporting on cruelty. Well, I, you know, there was an interview with the U.S. attorney uh, who was responsible for these arrests, uh, Mississippi, this morning on NPR, that same piece. And uh, he repeated a number of times that uh, he was just doing his job. They were enforcing the law, and these people were here against the law, and it was their job to enforce the law. I said, gee, that's law and order. That's, I guess yeah. he's arguing the rule of law. But this administration doesn't care about the rule of law. This administration breaks the law all the time. Look what's happening in Congress. They're breaking the law. They're breaking the duty to the public in so many ways. But these poor people, they're enforcing the law against these okay. poor people. So where's the rule of law when it talks about treating those that they've detained with humanity and, and proper care and the, and the facilities to be properly <clears throat> in order? Where's the rule of law on that? Where's the rule of law on, on uh, blowing off uh, all these uh, congressional subpoenas? Where's the rule of law on that? We could go on. Yeah. But let's go to China just yeah. for a minute and, and then try to put this together. This is also a week of continuing fisticuffs um, and threats between Trump and China and China in return. And all of a sudden, you know, China depreciated its currency, um, <clears throat> which, which is, you know, is uh, an attack on trade with the U.S. and the U.S. Um, and suggested it would continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And China said, or said it would, um, would stop buying agricultural products from right. the farmers in the U.S. The farmers have been part of the base, you know. Uh, this is going to have an effect. And Trump, in, you know, in turn, is making all these threats, and he's, he, 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 blew, he blew up the, um, the intermediate, um, you know, range missile agreement. I'm sorry, the nuclear agreement with Russia. And he's putting intermediate range missiles uh, in Korea, I think, South Korea. So he's, 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 um, he's creating hostility. He's creating um, sort of bellicose arrangements with all these places. It's getting way worse. China is getting really ticked off at us and is taking steps right. now. So our foreign policy is really in the tank. Yeah. And uh, ambassadors are quitting. Left and right, yeah. his intelligence community is quitting left and right. Uh, it's the sole proprietorship problem that we talked about before, how he's running the government all by himself with yes men all around him um, and, and wrecking our country inside and wrecking our relationships outside. And the question I, and I put to you is, uh, does, does it matter to the base, which seems to like him all the more? No, his popularity is increasing. Yeah. Um, you said something last week about why does he do these things against his own best interest, particularly when the election's a year and a half away, particularly with the economy? Because, you know, an economy is like a slow-moving tanker. Um, why is he implementing more tariffs that could potentially throw the economy down in a recession when he needs the economy to be um, buoyed and, 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 you know, vibrant? And the question is, who knows why he does it? All I know is that China has not really reacted the way they could. Because what threw that market down in a tailspin was, 700 the, points. was the threat so, of yeah. them devaluing the quant. But they actually didn't quite do that. They posted their official posting, and that's what made the market swing back the other way. Mm. Now, all it takes is China to send a message on the next maturity of treasuries, of which they own quite a bit of, of our debt. You know, not as much as the Saudis used to, but they still own a lot of our debt. All they have to do is let that roll in and mature and not reinvest it. That'll send them a, a real message to the markets. Number two is if they do start to devalue the quan, and number three is um, they can now uh, pick other sectors other than agricultural product, products 
to say, no, we're not buying from those sectors either. We're going to close the markets off. Now, if you're a farmer in the Midwest, I don't care how much subsidy you're getting from Donald Trump. At some point, you're going to go, I want to be a farmer and I want my market back. Well, when they were interviewed, right. the farmers were interviewed. Right. Indiana comes to mind. Back last summer, they said, we're really troubled about this tariff war because it hurts us. But we're willing to give him some more time. And the ones that were interviewed said, we give him till the, the end of the year. Well, the end of the year came and went already. Now we're in the next year. They're still with him. They still somehow believe he's going to come through. But, but really, the question is, can, can this continue? Or are we going to find one day that they abandon ship? Are we going to find one day that the Republicans in Congress abandon ship? Is it turning against him? Is it coming after him? Is it becoming clear already that he's wearing no clothes? I'm hoping that that is the case. Um, I know that for a minute there, I got this sort of glimpse of optimism um, as I watched all this stuff happen over this weekend and everything that transpired. I thought, well, maybe it's going to finally catch up with him. But, you know, he's just going to lie. He's just going to cheat and he's just going to lie in the same way that his um, propaganda video that he put out after he went to see the victims in El Paso at the hospital. He says that he shook their hands and, you know, they, they, everything went really great. They actually refused to see him. They would not let him come in and visit them in their rooms. So it's just flat out lie. You know, He's going to lie. The important part of that, what you just mentioned, was that he chastised his staff for not getting more cameras in there. Yeah. Okay, so you have victims in the hospital who have been shot up. That, and number two is they don't really want to see the president. And he's mad because he's not making more of a photo op at it. And the staff said, this is, this is way out of the norm to make a photo op of visiting people who have been shot up and their family members killed. And, and he's upset. He's upset. Well, I think he used that as an excuse because he didn't want to admit that they won't see him. So they can just, he can just blame it on the fact that, oh, we didn't really have enough cameras. Because that way he didn't have to actually well, say, yeah. they refused to see me, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of an important thing. What makes thing. him do these things? Do we know? Do we have a so hand? Power. Power. That's all it is. It's all about power and control. He's a control freak. We already know he's a classic narcissist. These kind of people, that's all they care about. They can't ever admit that there's something wrong with them. They have to always have someone to blame. All of those things. And they lie. And they lie. But they'll do whatever they need to do to keep their face to the public that they want to present. Yeah, that, well, the bigger question, or even Yui Long was found out. Back, back in the day, in the 30s, I guess, or the 40s in uh, Louisiana, <clears throat> people realized that he was a demagogue, and so he lost his support. I think somebody killed him, actually. He was uh, shot. <clears throat> so when are people going to realize that, uh, you know, Trump is wearing no clothes, that, that he's wrong all the time, he makes these horrible mistakes, he keeps on doing it again and again and again, doubles down, uh, and he is driven by hatred. Um, he's driven by the worst and greed, uh, the worst president we've seen probably in the history of the country. When are people really going to pick up on that? And will it be in time? No. I, I think he has a set percentage of his base. Again, I'll go to 35, 40 percent. I don't know what that number is. That will follow him no matter where he goes and know how low he goes and how depraved he acts. They'll follow him and say, you're our guy. And I don't have hope for that 35, 40%. I just don't. I, I did at one point, but I don't any longer. And I, I can't. I can't allow myself to give them credit that they'll change and see the light, to see the emperor without his, you know, the emperor with no clothes on syndrome. Yeah. I think some of the Republicans might come around, but I think his main core base is, is ignited by all this hate and all of this pro-white you know, rhetoric that's coming out of the White House. They're glad they don't have to hide those feelings that they have anymore. They can actually own them, right? So where are we on impeachment? Uh, Nancy, I guess she doesn't want to do it, uh, but uh, 118 last time I looked, maybe more now. Uh, it should be more now. It is more. Uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the House uh, is in favor of impeachment. Uh, it won't happen in the Senate, but the House is getting closer. Um, where are we? Is, is, is this coming to a tipping point somewhere soon? Um, or is it just going to sort of, see there's a race going on, the race of people who, in the House and the Senate for that matter, who don't, who, who think he should be impeached, 
But then the other race is that what he does becomes the new normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it it's doesn't look impeachable because he's been doing it so much. And you lose track of where he is on that continuum. And shame on the Democrats for using political calculus yeah. versus standing up for their principles as Democrats and their oath to office. Shame yeah. on them, too. Not it's not just the Republicans yeah. in the Senate and the House. The <clears throat> Democrats are more concerned about, again, political calculations and what it takes to win the next election than to stand up for themselves. And protect and, the Constitution. And, and protect this country. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was an interview just yesterday with, um, with Chairman Nadler, and he says, this is formal impeachment proceedings that are already underway. And that's a quote from him. Um, it's way more than half that are for impeachment now. And Nancy Pelosi is not throwing cold water anymore on all of it. And when they asked him about her, he said she's on board and has her signature on all these proceedings. So now they have, what, three new court filings that include the language of we are doing this for impeachment proceedings. Um, and they are working together to protect the Constitution. Something that only Congress can do is what he was saying. Um, and then he said, you know, they're not limited to just the obstruction charges that are in the second half of the Mueller report. But there's um, against the emoluments clauses, there's abuse of power, there's withholding all of the things that he's withholding um, for all of the documents and stuff. That's another thing that could actually be charged. That there are many core impeachable grounds and that they're hoping that they will be able to do it before the first of the year where they'll be able to actually get a vote on impeachment and send it to the Senate. And hopefully by then, they've had enough of the, um, you know, the witnesses that can come in. And so once the case is made a little bit better, maybe we'll get some more of those people. It depends on the courts, doesn't it? Right, it depends on the courts. Who may or uh -oh. may not act in time, or may not act in their favor. Uh -oh. You're running out of yeah. time. You, you run out of time. Right. You said something that really struck you know, an emotional chord with me, and that is get your signature on the papers, the documents, fine. Get on the podium and say to the American people that I support this. Right. I so, agree. you know, this is behind the scenes support and it's it's tepid at best. Get on the podium and make it make it so. Right. I agree. Speaking of podium, of course there's the campaign. Mm. Um, and the campaign is still uh, it's still a lot of Democrats shooting at other Democrats. I really hate to see that. Um, how are we doing on that? Do you think the public is coming together uh, over the, um, you know, the campaign, the Democratic campaign? Do you think there's um, a kind of leadership going on there? Or is it merely a statement of fragmentation? I think they've sort of come together a little bit more. They've got someone to attack instead of each other. They can go after Trump. At least that's what I've been hearing in the different interviews and all that are going on yeah. for me. You've had a wellspring of things to attack Trump on, and you didn't need the last week in which to do it. <laughs> That's true. Um, That's true. You know, I'm sorry, but if this, <laughs> if it takes an El Paso or a Dayton, Ohio, to for them to start directing their ire towards another object than other than themselves, that's a pretty sad statement. I agree. That's pretty pathetic. I, agree. Um, I think you're going to have infighting, and that's just politics, but not to the point where you are clawing someone down that can actually be the candidate that can beat Donald Trump. Mm. So they've got to stop right. that. You know, one of the things that seems to be holding up uh, impeachment in the, in the House, anyway, uh, is that they, um, they have um, the report of Mueller on uh, obstruction and, and uh, conspiracy collusion, if you will. And that's not that's secondhand. It's like hearsay. It's a report of other evidence. And they're taking the view that they need the other evidence. That's why they have issued you know, all these subpoenas, because they want the direct evidence, not the report of Mueller, um, to act on impeachment or whatever action they're going to take. But in fact, um, he hasn't cooperated. He has been, um, you know, obstructing throughout. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, imagine giving instructions to all his staff, don't talk to the, the House of Representatives, don't go down there, blow off the subpoenas. Um, and, and you could make a pretty good case that there's obstruction in that alone. Of course, right. right. Forget about the report. Forget about what the report looked at or found. He's obstructing their efforts to find out. So it seems to me, you know, that they could do an impeachment right now on the basis of that alone. 
I um, think you used the report. You used the report. Uh, that alone is a standalone document. Right, I agree. Sorry, but <laughs> it's there. Even right. Robert Mueller said it's there. It's there on, on, on these 448 pages. Okay, um, I mean, but, so, right, you don't have to have, uh, you know, impeachment is a, is a moral, political process. Not a legal one. Not a legal, you know, it doesn't matter about the you know, burden of proof and admissible evidence and all that. I don't think that plays. And, you know, but let me give you a scenario going forward. Okay? Uh, and we've talked about this, all three of us. So, Dayton, El Paso, not the end of it. Mm -hmm. The white supremacist movement is there. Congress has done nothing to stop it. They're growing. Congress has n done nothing to stop, really. I mean, this, this, the bum stock thing is, a, is sui generis. It's, yeah. it, it's not really a big deal. It, um, it has done nothing to stop the huge number of guns in this country. So many ways that could have happened, but they didn't do anything. Um, and Trump is out there fanning the flames. We have no action by Congress on either you know, the white supremacists and hate movements, and you have, uh, or on gun control, and Trump is out there fanning the flames. And I have to add that social media has really not been stopped. It's still doing it. Uh, the Russians must be laughing up their sleeve about oh, this, that's the, other thing the right. ultimate divisiveness. And, and who knows how much involvement they have in this hatred business. Okay? So it's going to continue Okay, there will be more El Pasos and more Dayton. Oh, yeah. Where does that play in accelerating, advancing, you know, the movement toward impeachment? Well, I think the more things that are, are happening that are completely um, connected to his hate speech, it's going to increase people coming behind the whole impeachment process. And I can only hope that all of the town hall meetings that you know, our, our Congress is having now that they're back home in their districts. It, it's going to be just an outpouring of people saying, hey, we want impeachment and we want it now. And I think that was one of the things they're sort of waiting for that public groundswell that hasn't really happened because we've all been so desensitized to all of this hate for so long, right, that it's just going to keep going and yeah. going and going. Well, Donald Trump says, and I quote, I've toned it down. I've toned it down quite a bit. Meaning his rhetoric, oh, he was doing and that it was before, that was his <laughs> his way of trying to explain that I'm not uh, uh, the speaker of hate because I've toned it down. By saying I've toned it down means he acknowledges that he's done it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so think about that. so remember Donald Trump. Remember what he does. He runs up to the line. He gets in trouble. He runs back. Then he waits a while. He runs back up the line again. He sees how further much over the line he can crawl. And I say crawl with uh, emphasis. And, crawls. and the process creates right. a new normal, right. which makes it hard for Congress to do anything. The right. other element, and I want to ask you guys about this, my last point of inquiry, is that so we have, we have violence going on around Iran. Oh, yeah. We have this very strange, peculiar, bizarre, beautiful letters, but also intermediate, intermediate missiles coming from uh, North Korea. We have a, a very strange and uh, threatening relationship with, with Russia, who not only is a, a, a f offending our relations, um, you know, rather our elections, uh, and you got to see that movie, uh, the, the, the Great the Hack. The Great Hack, I was it just shows you it. about how they do that, um, right. how they did it and are doing it now, and the tearing up of the nuclear treaty with them. Um, we're talking about uh, so many places in the world um, or China, you know, which is getting more angry at us, the people on the street getting more angry, and the steps that the government is taking against us, more draconian. And this, the heat is going up in all of these places. Any one of them, they're all tinderboxes. Any one of them could erupt in uh, fantastic um, battles and wars and attacks. Okay, how does that play in the possibility of impeachment? You know, because, because Trump will say, you need me. It's a national emergency. Right. Um, you, you know, you, you, you don't want to lose your sitting president uh, during time of war or, you know, military action. How does that affect the possibility of impeachment? The argument is, you created this mess. Your leadership is the problem. And therefore, it's your leadership that is in question 
when we take this impeachment vote. Whether we're successful or not isn't the point. The point is we're going to stand up for a principle, preserve the rule of law and the Constitution, period. In hopes, in our fondest hopes, I think that's the case. But you know, about that great hack, which is a really, really amazingly enlightening show that I think everybody should watch, because it really talks to how the algorithms are being used by some of these social media companies. They can tell not just where you are and what you like to shop for, but whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether you are a hardcore Republican, whether there's room for you to be, you know, changed on your attitude and what they need to send you to try to gently nudge you in that direction. So you've got all these kids that maybe are desensitized to violence because of the video games, which is in there, right? There's no solid studies yet, but it's in there. And then you take these kids that are on social media basically 24 seven, and you start to feed them little things. You know, they, you know, kind of go and they veer towards that white supremacy anyway. So you start feeding them things and you just feed that one person through their social media what you want them to know. And you can just, you can ignite anything you want you in that them. one person. And if you want to make them dysfunctional, non functional as a country, you want to have them fall down. That's right. Divide them. That's Easy what's happening to, do. to us. That's right. And it's not that difficult to do. And that's what algorithms that are so, you know, behind everything that's in our social media. You got to watch the movie. That's okay, what we're it out is. of time, Tim. Closing for you. What do you think is going to happen next week? What are you worried about? What are you looking for? What I'm worried about is a statement you made that I hope to God it never comes to pass. This is more El Pasos. Mm more Dayton, Ohio's, just because we have a, a president that knows nothing more than to uh, fan the flames of racial hatred. And what I think in the next week we're going to see is him being a little bit more contrite and um, play act that he's interested in gun control. He's owned by the NRA, and that's the fact. He may not be able to control what he has started. There's a wildfire burning in this country. The country is burning. And what, what strikes me is, you know, you worry about the courts, which he has packed, I'm still doing it with conservatives. The wildfire may be visible to them. They may decide they have to act in order to save the country. I hope they have the baseline patriotism to actually see this. That would be nice. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Thank Cynthia. You very much. Thank you, Jay. Next week. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.